Hello from Coleman and Company, and we've got another video for your GraphTech uh, cutting plotter and GraphTech Studio software. We're going to be talking today about the trace function. Right in here, as you can see, the trace function that's up in the top right corner of your GraphTech Studio software. And this function allows you to take a JPEG image or a bitmap or a PNG, just a regular raster file, and actually trace it to convert it into lines to cut. And it is an incredibly useful tool in the software. It's very easy to use if you know what you're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a image for you so you can go ahead and take a look at how this works. So let's go ahead and just open. And I'm going to switch this down to all files because we can open up lots of different files in the software. And I'm going to choose, we'll choose this right here. Okay. So this is a superhero character. If you know what it is, it's a bonus for you. I'm not going to tell you though. So uh, let's go ahead and open it up. Get it nice and big. Okay. So we can see what we're working with. Now, let's say we're going to go ahead and we wanted to put an image like this onto a t-shirt. But if we go to cut it right now, we've got nothing to cut. Okay. So we need to go ahead and convert this and trace this over. So let me show you how to do this. So we're going to open up the trace tool and we're going to hit select trace area. And we're going to just select the whole image because we're going to be doing the whole thing here. Okay, and as you can see, we've got some yellow lines that pop up. The yellow lines are essentially the lines that are going to be created for cutting. So you can imagine the yellow would be the vinyl that you would see, almost in a way. Uh, that's a good way to imagine it. So if I were to just do nothing, let me just show you, I'll click trace and just leave it as that. We've created this. Okay, we've created these lines and these are all going to be cut out by your cutter. But that's not what we want to do. That's not really going to be effective for what you want to do. You want to make this shirt uh, something that's going to look fantastic. So let me show you how to do that. We've got a few different tools here on the side here. We've got a high pass filter, which is on the top. We've got a low pass filter right below that. We've got a threshold and we've got a scale. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about what they do. And it doesn't matter too much uh, the technical side of it because you're just really you want to go by the visual of what you see. But essentially the high pass filter, what that's doing is that's going to smooth the differences between the dark and the light pixels. It's going to look at dark and light pixels and try to figure out the differences between them so it can turn those into lines for you. You've got the low pass filter. That filter, when you turn it on, that does noise reduction. So that goes in there and it takes a look at the noise in the image. It tries to reduce that. The low pass filter is good when you can't quite get the detail you need. It's bad because it can reduce the sharpness of your image, which basically means that you might not get as many smooth lines. Then we've got the threshold. The threshold is actually essentially going to be how much of these filters are going to be put on. How much, how how strong is is it going to look at this image and the differences in the pixels and such. So let me just show you how some of them look. If I were to take the high pass filter, as you can see, it kind of goes in and it reaches a threshold, and that's about the biggest differences. This is not this is not good for us, right? Um, I can turn on my low pass filter and I can also make some adjustments and you can see it's it's changing that too. Again, that's not what we're looking for though. Okay. So now I can turn them off though, one at a time. And I can turn this one on and I can make some adjustments. That's not going where I want it to go either, is it? Every image is going to be different and you're going to have to go in here and you're going to, you'll turn them on and off and you'll just, and you'll begin to see right away. You know, that's not doing anything for me. That's not doing anything for me. Doing them together is not doing anything for me. I can also adjust my threshold. So, well, one thing I will usually do myself, and this is just me, there's a method for everything, but I, I'll start with turning them both off and I'll just start with my threshold. And oftentimes I can reach points in the threshold where I actually can start seeing the image come alive on what I'm gonna be able to cut. So I'm gonna show you how I would do this image, just me. Um, uh, some folks might do it differently and have and have other ways to do it, but I find that this way works really well. You can also go down here and reduce and adjust the scale, and this is also going to adjust 
uh, how these filters come into play. So you would adjust your scale, then adjust your threshold, and find good points for you. And if you don't find anything that works, you can adjust your scale a little bit more up and down and move your threshold again. But when I get in here, and I'm going to just, I'm, I always click here to make sure I've got the full image. And if I want to get a little closer, we can hit the plus and the minus. So I want to get a good close up look at this. So I've got two things that I want to cut. I've got these half moons, and I've got this whole image and this center line. So that's what we need to cut, right? We've got two different things. We can either make this a two color design by having a solid one color here, one color here, and then one color for the circle. We can make it a single color design by just having the outside lines and the eyes. Or we can even make it a three color design by having the outside lines, the half moon circles, and the eyes as three different colors. So that's a few different ways that we can do this. And, and we can go more complicated, but that's the way that I would create this image. So I'm going to do two different things. I'm going to show you how I did it and why I did it. Uh, first, I'm going to adjust the threshold so I can get these half moons. Okay, so right, right there, that's about the max. I see the line is fairly smooth, and the software is going to help to fix that. I'm going to hit trace. All right, now I'm going to move it out of the way, and you'll see what I did here. Now I've got the inside line. So this could be color one. Say this could be black vinyl. All right, I'll, and I'll actually just hit control Z, edit, undo, use that a lot. Don't be afraid to move things and then hit control Z or hit edit undo. Um, I do that all the time. It's going to help you in your software so you can just see things. All right, now I want to trace it again. So I'm going to go and I'm going to back this up a bit so I can get the whole thing. I'm going to trace it. Now I want to get the entire circle and you're going to see what's going to happen. So I'm going to turn off my filters again. Start here. I'll zoom in a little bit so I can get a nice view and I'm looking to get as much as I can without going too far over the edge because I want to get a good clean. So right there looks pretty good. Again, we just want to look for the detail. So these eyes, it's tracing them nice. And it's not perfect now, but when I hit trace, you're going to see that these lines smoothed out. Let me get in a little bit closer so you can actually see. You can see that line that just traced on the outside. Now we're really, really close. I mean, we're talking about when we, if we view a grid, you know, on this. And let me move this out of the way so we can see. When I zoom in here, you know, I mean, we're, we're talking about a very small piece. This is only six inches wide. So this little corner right here is only a little bit. And you just want to make sure you get it nice and close so it looks good when you're going to cut it. And I think that that's going to look good. But we've got two sets of lines right here, you see, because we filtered it twice. I don't need two eyes to be cut. So I'm going to show you how I would now finalize and edit this image. So let's go ahead and let me turn off the grid. And let me move this completely out of the way. And now you can see where we've got. I can do a few colors here. I can cut just this. I can cut the whole thing out and weed out just the half moons and now I've got a single color design. I could cut the whole thing out and uh, weed out the eyes and this and then cut it out in a second color and cut out just the half moons or I can cut out just the eyes, just the half moons and then the whole thing and have a three color design. So I'm gonna turn this into a one color design, a two color design and a three color design. The first thing I'm gonna do is just get rid of this and then I'm gonna zoom in now I'm going to, oh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to separate this whole thing. So I'm going to grab the whole image, I'm going to right click it, and I'm going to choose Release Compound Path. Now, what does that mean? That means that every image is now a different piece. Remember I said undo? This is where you can start. If you're not sure, is that two or one? Just move it. And if it was one, just hit undo and you go back. So now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to pick the eyes that I feel looked better, which were the outside ones. So I'm going to so I'm actually going to pick the inside ones and I'm just going to get rid of them. Just delete, delete. Now we've got our image, right? Now, 
if I was going to cut this out as a one color design, this is ready to cut. I can now hit send to cutter, and then what I would do is I would say cut this out, say if this was just going to be black or or red, uh, I would cut this thing out, I would weed out this area right here, I would weed out this area here, and I would have my design. I would have the outline, I would have uh, say a red outline and red eyes or a black outline and black eyes. Now if I wanted to cut this out for a multicolor design then I would actually select these two and I would make these a path. You don't have to do that but it keeps them together and it helps it helps you organize your your workspace. So I'd put them together by right clicking make the compound path and then I would just turn this into a different color. When I turn it into a different color, it doesn't mean I have to cut two different colors, but it allows me that option. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with the eyes. I'm going to select both of them, and I'm just holding down the Shift key right now. And I'm going to right-click, I'm going to make those a path. And then I'm going to select that, and I'm going to pick that. It just as another color. It doesn't matter what colors you choose, although I do recommend choosing the colors of vinyl that you are going to use. So in this scenario, the my outline, per se, I was going to make and say gray. The inside area I was going to make and say black. Uh, and then the eyes I was, I'm going to make and say red. So that could be in theory a way that I would do this. Now this is ready to cut. So let me show you how I would cut it. Okay. Uh, the first thing I would do is if I was going to cut just my outline, okay, uh, that this outside gray color, so this is going to be my gray vinyl. I would get rid of the eyes and I would cut this. Okay, so what that would leave me with is I would weed out everything around it and I would weed out this half moon and I would weed out this half moon and that would leave me with this circle with a line through it and now my my uh, gray is cut. All right, then the I would go back in then I would I would go here. I'm not connected to a cutter now, but I would hit send to cutter and then I would be done. Then now I have my half moon areas. Okay, these are say if I was going to do those in black. So I would go back into my configure cut job, make sure it's on by color right here, and I would turn off the gray, and I would just have my two half moons. However, there's eyes in there, so I'm also going to turn the eyes back on. So now when I'm done, I would weed out everything around here, and I would weed out my eyes. Okay? Then the next thing I would cut is going to be just the eyes. And you could then just cut just your eyes. Now there is, in doing the three color though, now there is, is, is some things to consider. Okay, as you are pressing this and using this, you have to line that up perfect in order to get that just right. So is that going to be a little more work for you? Yeah. So there's actually some things you could do to make that job easier for yourself. And I'm going to show you that next. So, and it, I do recommend doing this, by the way, uh, just because if you're doing one shirt, it's maybe not that big of a deal to line it up perfectly. But if you're going to be doing a dozen of these um, or a hundred shirts, then you want to make your job easy and quick. And you don't want to worry about having a little piece of shirt showing through your vinyl. Or especially just as you're heating this vinyl and this shirt and everything, you're going to get some movement or possibly material to shrink and grow as moisture changes. So having giving yourself some extra room to work with will help. This is where the design is going to look different and a more, little more complicated, but it's not. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to select this, this outside area, and I'm going to create another line around it. And I'm going to use this offset. Okay, now you see what the offset did. It created another line around it. And I'm going to put sharp corners so I can get it to match. And then I'm going to adjust it down a little bit. And I just want to make it a little bit bigger than the line that I'm going to cut. Okay, so when I cut out, when I'm thinking about this in layers, okay, I'm going to cut out an outside border that's a little bit larger. So when I lay down my, when I lay this piece down and I lay the gray layer on top of it, so I would lay the black down, I would press it, then I would lay the gray down and there would be a little bit of an overlap. That little bit of an overlap is the wiggle room that you would have where if it's not 100% perfectly centered, it would still look fine. If you had a little bit of shrinkage on the material or in the shirt or anything like that, it's just fine. You don't have to worry about it being 100% perfect. But I want to turn this into another color. 
So I could go in here and I'm for the sake of seeing this well in the video, I'm going to turn it just orange for now so we can see it nice and clear. Let me get zoom in a little bit. Okay. So, and then I want to do the same thing for the eyes. So I'm going to select the eyes. I'm going to choose an offset. I'm going to, I'm going to do corner. Again, we're not going to be seeing this outside area anymore. Okay. And then I'm going to adjust that down and give myself some room, room to work with. All right. And then now we've got, I'm going to change that color as well. Now these aren't grouped together yet. So if I hit shift, I can also make them a path and then go in there and I'm going to make this one green. So now we've got a few different colors here. So the design looks a little more complicated now, but it's not. Now we need to think about it. So this is where you want to sit back, make sure you've had your coffee for the morning and pay attention to thinking about how you're going to cut this out and how you're going to lay it out. All right. So what I might do, I'm just thinking in theory of how I might do it um, on the spot here. What I'd probably do is want to cut out my eyes first and lay those down first. Um, this is going to be the eyes that I'm actually going to see. So if I was going to make the eyes say like a red glitter, something that would really pop out, um, I want to cut those out first. But I want a little bit of a layering that's going to go, that's going to give me room to work in case I don't line up my eyes perfect. So I'm going to go into my cut area and I'm going to choose by color. And I'm just going to choose the green of the eye. So I've got eyes that are bigger than the holes I'm cutting out. Hopefully you're following me here. Um, the eyes that I'm cutting out are going to be slightly bigger than the holes on the layer that's going to be above it. Okay, so now I'm going to turn all my layers back on. So now I've cut out my eyes. Say we used, I say we used red glitter is the idea that I thought about. So we cut those out. Now we've got red glitter eyes that are slightly larger than the holes we're going to cut out next. So now I'm going to cut out the half moons. Now remember, in the half moons. I want to cut out half moons that are going to be slightly larger than the holes in the outline of this design. So this is the outline that we're going to do in say gray vinyl and we're going to do black half moons. I want my half moons that I'm going to layer on top of the eyes to be slightly larger than the holes that are going to be for the half moons in the gray circle. Okay, So that is this orange area. Now this might not be the exact size that I choose. I, I might even go a little bit bigger, but I think that this would be pretty close for, I'd feel pretty comfortable in cutting this out. So I'm going to now go into here and I'm going to start deselecting. I want to, in these half moons, I don't want the green to be cut out. That's my oversize. Okay. And I don't want the black to be cut out. The black is technically the holes and the, uh, the lines for the border not for the half moons. So I'm going to turn my black off. Okay. And then I just don't need to cut the border because that's not what we're doing here. So now I'm going to cut this out. All right. And what I've cut out now is an oversized half moon for each size. And the, and what I actually want the artwork to see, what I want the person to see. So, um, what, so I'm going to go ahead and click on right here. And I would go ahead and I would just go ahead and send that to the cutter. And then I would weed out my eyes and I could put these half moons right over the eyes. And the last thing we want to do is now cut out our outline. So I'm going to turn everything back on just so you can see where we're starting from. And I now when I do this final piece, it's just going to be the outline. So I don't have to worry about the eyes at all. Okay. And I don't want the oversized border. I want the what I'm actually going to see. So I'm going to turn off my oversize. And now we're ready to cut that out. And that's the third thing that I'm going to cut. So I'll hit here and I'll hit send to cutter. So what we've done is we've used the trace tool and we've done a little theory on creating a multicolor design from that trace. Uh, it does get slightly complicated, but you just got to think about it. It's not too hard. As you can see, all the steps we did here, we didn't do a whole lot of clicking. We never messed with any manual artwork. We just thought about the theory behind doing this three color design and using the trace function up here. So hopefully you've learned something from this video and you have the opportunity to create some awesome things. And please, um, you know, share with us if you create some things because of watching this video, we would love to see it and we'd love to see some images from it. So uh, visit us at ColemanandCompany.com and enjoy using your Graphtech Studio software. Thank you. Uh -huh.